Hello. Welcome back. It's so good to see you. So today is another true crime video. Yay. Um, okay, so I've been looking for some true crime videos or ideas to make true crime videos and I found this one that is quite interesting, quite scandalous. Um, so it's kind of like I, I don't want to just read it off of a piece of paper. I want to, I've got my notes. I have my handy dandy little notebook that I got for Christmas from my mom. And I have my notes in here that I took from this story. Um, but I want to tell it differently than I normally do. Because it's just so shocking. And it is a true crime story, but it's like, more like a hot gossip. Like, what? It's so crazy. Um, now, it is true crime. The crime happens kind of like at the end of the story. But leading up to the true crime is just like crazy. It's so insane. So, let me tell you about this story. It's about Olberga Ustrek. Um, she also has a nickname, thank God, Dolly, because that name was really hard for me to say. Like I said it over and over and over just so I could get it right for the video. But her nickname was Dolly. So we're going to call her Dolly from now on. All right. Oh, and this is also like kind of old school, like way old school. So Dolly was born in 1880 to German immigrant parents. Now, it's unclear whether Dolly was born in Germany or if she was born in the United States shortly after her parents came over here. Um, but anyway, so she grew up in Mil Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and at the age of 12, Dolly worked in a textile mill owned by a, nam a man named Fred. Um, and Fred was also a German immigrant who became like super successful, obviously, since he owned the textile factory. Okay, now let's just pause for a second to appreciate the times because uh, this is like super in the way because it's like, can you imagine being 12 years old and working in a factory? Like, no, 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 no. Uh, it just thank God, you know, for child labor laws and, you know, cause God, I can't like, my daughter is about to be nine, but she's much older. And it's like, I can't imagine her going to work. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, continuing on with the story. So Dolly was doing her thing, working at the factory. She was very pretty, very charismatic, and everybody loved her. She had lots of friends at this factory and everyone just really liked her, right? Well, she caught the eye of the owner, Fred. She's 12, Fred, gross. So Dolly and Fred start dating. Super gross, right? Mm. Anyway, later they get married when Dolly turned 17. But it turns out it wasn't all that gross because Fred was actually only three years older than her. But so my dude Fred was like mega successful because that means that when Dolly started working there at 12, the owner, Fred, was 15? What? Like, that's crazy. Anyway, this has nothing to do with the story, but I just wanted to say that the textile factory, they made aprons. Like, you know that was in the 1800s because it's very rare that people wear aprons now. I wear an apron just because it's like a 1950s apron and I think it's so cute, but, um, most people don't 
I don't think most people don't wear aprons. Like, you can't find them in every store. Way off topic. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so he owned it at the age of 15. What? Like, that's... Can you imagine being 15 and owning a whole factory? Crazy. Anyway, so Dolly becomes Fred's wife, right? And she kind of hangs around the factory, like, resolving labor disputes because Fred was kind of like grumpy and people didn't like him that much but they really liked Dolly um and he didn't really know how the factory worked but she did so she was like okay so she would be kind of like the middleman in between the workers and him so she was hanging out at the factory a lot anyway the two had somewhat of a happy marriage um but that was until Dolly became pregnant, and that was happy, but she actually lost the baby. Um, it's really sad. Um, so that, that puts some distance between her and Fred, right? Anyway, so some time passes, and it's now like 1913, and Dolly is 33 years old. So she's at the factory, and is introduced to a new sewing machine repairman that her husband hired, 17-year-old Otto Sinhuber. Well, Dolly likes what she sees. Mm, she likes Otto a lot. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, shortly after meeting Otto, the super hot mach sewing machine repair guy, uh, uh-oh, her sewing machine broke at home. What? Oh, what is a girl to do? <laughs> so she calls super hot repairman Otto to come to her house. And when he gets there, she opens the door in nothing but stockings. What? <laughs> Scandalous, right? Okay, so obviously an affair begins and Otto is coming over like all the time okay and the neighbors are starting to talk like who's this guy that keeps showing up every day when her husband leaves you know so to avoid suspicion Dolly tells all of her neighbors and you know looky loos um that Otto is her half brother so he's just visiting he's just family you know no, the neighbors are not buying it because they're like, she's cheating on her husband with some random man or she's cheating on her husband with her own brother. <laughs> what? So, to conceal this relationship, Dolly convinces Otto to move into the attic. What? No, thank you. No. But Otto does it. An attic? Gross. Like, and it wasn't even a finished attic or anything like that. It was like a pull down, move the board, you know what I mean? Like, get up there, attic. Like, not nice. Anyway, so he's given a cot, some food, a lamp, books, and writing materials. So, during the day, after Fred leaves for work, Otto would come down out of hiding from the attic and he would help Dolly with her housework among other things wink wink <laughs> and right before Fred returned home Otto would go back up to the attic and live in total silence reading and writing science fiction stories which Dolly would you know mail to potential um I'm sorry, my lips are chapped, and it's driving me crazy. Uh, mine's better. Okay, so Dolly would mail these writings that he did in the attic to potential publishers, right? So, Otto later described himself as Dolly's sex slave, claiming that they made love up to eight times a day. What? So, I don't know how much housework was actually getting done, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 
Anyway, so now this whole time, Fred has no idea, no idea what's going on in his own house. Anyway, so years go by, I'm talking years, and it's now 1918. And Fred comes home and tells Dolly that the business is doing so great that he's going to be opening up a second factory in Los Angeles. So they're going to have to be moving. And Dolly's all like, no way, because I got a good setup here with the sex leave in the attic, right? <laughs> but Fred puts his foot down and is like, it's happening, woman. You know, so she says, okay. I'll move to stupid Los Angeles, but only if I get to pick the house. So Fred's like, okay, good deal. So they go house hunting and I'm all like picturing <laughs> house hunters like in the 1880 or 1900s, you know, and it's all like, he makes aprons and she cleans houses and stockings. Their budget is $67 million. <laughs> anyway, so Dolly deliberately picks a house with an attic, obviously, um, which was very rare at the time for Los Angeles. I don't know if it's rare now, but for the time, it was rare. Anyway, so Dolly returns home to Wisconsin to like pack up the house and stuff like that and she tells Otto um about the new home and gives him the address and stuff like that so Otto travels to Los Angeles and basically sets himself up and moves into the attic and then waits for Dolly and Fred to arrive once the move is complete the affair continues for four more years. What? Crazy, right? That is until August 22nd, 1922. Fred comes home from work and Dolly and Fred begin arguing. We don't know what the argument was about, but it was, sh it was like they were shouting. It was intense. It got louder and louder and like it became so intense that Otto believed that Dolly was in real danger so Otto emerges from the attic and retrieves two 25 caliber pistols from the bedroom Otto confronts Fred and a struggle ensues can you imagine Fred's face like when this guy just emerges out of the attic out of nowhere like what Anyway, so it ends with Otto shooting Fred three times and, you know, killing him. So Dolly and Otto panic and then quickly come up with this plan to make it look like a botched robbery, right? So Dolly gave Otto all the cash that they had in the bedroom as well as Fred's diamond watch. I want to see that watch. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so Otto then locks Dolly in a closet and tosses aside the key before returning to the attic with the money, the watch, and the pistols. The neighbors had called the police once they heard the gunshots, obviously, so the cops were there pretty quickly. Once the police arrived, they let her out of the closet, but seem, things seemed suspicious, you know, um, and they strongly suspected that Dolly was involved, but they were unable to explain how she could have locked herself in the closet, because it was like a key lock, you know, um, anyway, so after Fred's murder, Otto continued to live in the attic for eight years. What? Why? Why? Why still stay in the attic? Like, you can come down now. Um, but the only change was that Dolly gave him a typewriter because no one was there to hear it. So, you know, make all the noise you want, Otto. 
What? Why? Why would you stay in the attic for eight more years? Like, what? Ugh. Anyway, so by this time, they were still investigating the murder. And Dolly needed an attorney. So she hired attorney Herman Shapiro. And shockingly, she begins an affair with her attorney as well. Girl. Girl. Mm. So, by 1930, Herman became suspicious after Dolly gave him a gift. What was the gift? It was a diamond watch. But wait a minute. It was the same diamond watch that she had reported stolen by the burglars who murdered her husband. So he was like, wait a minute, isn't this the, the watch? And she's all like, oh, oops. I mean, yeah. So like, I actually found it in my front yard. So the burglars must have dropped it when they were escaping. Sure. <laughs> so during the investigation that's been going on for years, um, a neighbor told police that shortly after the murder, Dolly had given him some pistols to dispose of. Because they kind of look like the guns that killed her husband and she didn't want to like get in trouble. <laughs> so the neighbor buried the pistols in his rose garden. Well, he told that to the police and the police dug up the rose gardens and found the pistols. But so much time had gone by that the pistols began to decay. But they were able to determine that both weapons were the same caliber that killed Dolly's husband. So, Dolly was arrested under the suspicion of murder. <laughs> so, Dolly goes to jail and it is like, oh no, someone has to tell my sex slave I'm in jail. <laughs> so, Dolly tells her lover slash attorney uh, to go buy groceries and he's all like, why? There's no one in the house. And that's when she tells Herman that her half-brother has been living in the attic and asks if he can go check on him. What? So, Herman the attorney uh, goes to the house and knocks twice on the attic door because that was their signal to let him know that it was safe to come down. Which it should be safe to come down because her husband's been dead for like eight years, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, so, Herman uh, was greeted by a very thin, pale, but very nice and cordial man, Otto. Um, and Otto explained his true relationship to Dolly. And he also confesses to his role in the murder. Otto was arrested and was convicted of manslaughter, but was quickly released because the statute of limitation had expired. Otto changed his name to Walter Klein and moved to Canada married another woman, you know, had a normal life, and then moved back to Los Angeles, and no one ever heard from him again. Dolly, uh, was on trial for murder, and, uh, the, it ended in a hung jury, and in 1936, the indictment against her was just dropped. So, Dolly remained in Los Angeles until her death in 1961 at the age of 80. And no one ever paid for the murder of Fred. What? What? Isn't that story crazy? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like hot gas. Like, I just, I, I got no words. I got no words. What do you say about that? Like, 
that's the craziest truth crime like and this happened in 1980 and i want to talk to this otto or walter klein like i mean it must have been good you know what i'm saying because i added it up and he lived he had an affair with her and basically lived in her attics for 17 years who would do that and then the whole time she just continued normal married life like he was in the attic and he could hear everything that was going on in the house but he had to be completely silent what is crazy right anyway so i really hope that you enjoyed this insanely crazy true crime story and i will see you soon